feel that you're stuck in the spiritual closet? Do you feel that you want to break free from the bounds that are keeping you in the spiritual closet and preventing you from doing what you've come to do? Lisa and I are going to help you with that today with tips and tools and also with some support and just practical how-tos. Angel Heart Radio programs should not be used to replace your legal or medical advice. Welcome everyone to Angel Heart Radio. You are our focus. We want you to know that you matter in the world and that you're important to the world. We're here to remind you of just how valuable and needed you are right now. Help us to help others. If you like what you hear, tell your friends, post, tweet, pin, let everyone know how amazing Angel Heart Radio is. So again, welcome to Angel Heart Radio. Powered by Love, Angel Heart Radio is sponsored by angellight777.com. Well, 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 good morning from Brisbane, Australia. This is Anaya Joy Halili speaking. Great to have your company today. Lisa and I are going to speak to you about something that is so incredibly important. And I don't think it's ever been more important than it is now. And that is, how do we come out of the spiritual closet? How do we fess up (laughs) to what it is we really do so that we can embrace our purpose and our journey here. I'm an angel intuitive with advanced training. I am the creator of Angel Heart Radio. I'm also the creator of angellight777.com and I'm also really excited because this is such a journey. It's one I've been on. It's one Lisa's been on and wow, it's a big one. We want to help you. Morning, Lisa. Morning. Do I go through my introduction? Yep. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Namaste. I'm Lisa Ellis, uh, angel specialist and intuitive. I'm a registered Diana Cooper Foundation angel teacher, a registered Karuna Reiki master teacher, and a certified Theta healer. I'm also co-host of the Angel Heart radio podcast, Archangel series, and of course, Angel Life. You can find out more about me and my work at www.feathersofanangel.com. Yes, it's a journey that um, so many of us... Sorry, can you hear me? Go ahead. No, go, go, go. Yep. Yep. I was just saying it's a journey that all of us seem to have been on, just like stepping into the sunshine out of the shadows of of playing small about what we do and what we are. Yeah, and what we've come to do. And I think Mm. the most important thing I can say to people is it's okay, we can help you and you can do it. And most of us have been through this. I don't know one spiritual worker, one light worker, who has instantly known what they want to do, has instantly felt the um, confidence to talk about it and say who they really are to their friends, family and just the general public, Lisa. Do you? Um, I can't think of anyone, no. Mm. I think we've all all struggled with self-doubt and then just stepping into the power that this is who we are and this is who we're going to be and, you know, just expressing ourselves fully, living our purpose and then going that extra step further and coming out of the spiritual closet, as you put it perfectly, being open and honest about, yes, I'm a light worker, I'm a spiritual person and I've come here to change the world. Mm. And that's what we've really come to do. That's a big statement, but it's true. We have come to make a huge difference in the world. It's why we are here. And it's also why it feels so difficult for us to own up to what we do. And as Doreen Virtue said, the bigger your life purpose, the louder, the louder um, the, uh, your ego, our ego, is going to be. Mm. Yes. Mm. Very true. Um I met a lady, um, it was actually during my basic theta healing training, which was an in-person uh, three-day workshop back in 2011. Um, no, uh, just a couple of years ago, 2014. And the lady there, she said it's um, we were having a get-together to catch up with each other a few months later. And she said, oh, it's so nice to be around spiritual people because she tries to talk to her other friends about what she does and how excited she is about healing and spirituality. And they go, you don't really believe in that poppycock, do you? And and that's mm-hmm. what she that's what she had to deal with 
So she hid it. She played small, and she would only fully express who she really was when she was with you know spiritual people. Which is extremely limiting. I'm, I think most of us have probably been there. I know I have. I remember, you know, the days of um, people saying, you know, what, what do you do, Anaya? And I had no clue yeah. what to say to them. I just didn't yeah. know how to yeah. say. I work with the with the angelic realms, and it. So I'd sort of, you know, waffle on a bit about, oh, I do this, or I'm writing a book, or whatever it was. Um, and then one day the angels just stepped in and it was like the words just came out of my mouth and I said, I work with the angelic realms. And I was absolutely horrified, Lisa, because, oh my God, it's out there now and what are they going to say in return? And it was such a shock for me when they said, oh, that's really interesting. I quite want to know about the angels. What can you tell me? So it was. I had an easy sort of way of getting into it, I guess, because... As I said, it was like the words just were put in my mouth and they fell out. It was almost like an accident. And then when I realized it wasn't going to be so bad for me, I went ahead from there. I I guess I'd like to say to people listening, the thing is, not everyone's going to agree with you. And the thing is, friends and, and sometimes family are going to try and talk you out of it, think you've lost your mind, or want to change you or worse they want to save you especially if there's a religious connotation there yes yes I found that in my own family with um, I mean I still struggle with my family <coughs> not accepting what I do but that's fine I'm com- well I am actually really comfortable with it I am who I am and I'm open about it and it just feels like taking a warm shower to be that way compared to hiding it all the time but um, my father, who did have the religious aspect, he had his own very strong beliefs. When he found out I'd taken up meditation, I got I got the phone call, you know, saying, we need to have a talk, you know. So I completely understand that, you know, people, if they have very strong beliefs, it can be hard for them to let go of them enough to accept that, you know, you are being you and it's your life. Yeah. And I think one of the big things, Lisa, is letting go of the need and the desire to get people to accept us. Mm. Letting go of, yeah. Um, It's wanting to be liked. Wanting to be liked. It's wanting to be liked. Yeah. Yeah. And accepted. Yeah. And we think that's where our peace is going to come from, where in fact our peace comes from doing what it is we've come to do. Our soul already has contracted to do this work and it's up to us now in the physical form to find ways to become comfortable. Now, the other thing is you're bound to lose friends. This is the other really big thing about it. I can't tell such and such. And I was saying to you, Lisa, that I've had I've had friends on Facebook who have private messaged me and asked me not to place anything spiritual on their walls because their family don't know about it, don't know that that's how they really feel. And while, hey, I'm happy to respect that, that's no problem. What for me is I can understand where they're at and it's very challenging and very difficult when you're walking that line between coming out of that spiritual closet, telling people who you really are, what you really believe in and what your passion is and denying yourself the opportunities that that affords you when you do it to live your life in a different way. That's a very, that's an in-between place I found and that's a very, very tricky. Now, not everyone is going to accept that and some friends will move on. But the fact of the matter remains that if we want to live our lives out loud, our spiritual lives out loud, then we have to be prepared for that. And while that and it's happened to me. When I I remember I had a friend for fifteen years, we were very, very close. We were very close and she couldn't cope when I came out, as it were. And she wrote me a letter and she said to me, I don't feel I can be authentic with you anymore. 
So it's time to call the friendship quits. And I immediately went into that place, oh, maybe I should have been quiet. Maybe I should have just gone along for the ride. Maybe I should have, maybe I should have. And so then I asked myself, okay, Anaya, you've gone along for the ride. How do you feel? And I realized I just feel awful about that. I don't want to go along for the ride anymore. I want to be, I want to drive my own life. And so I wrote back to her and I thanked her for our friendship and told her I would, you know, really miss that. But I could see that it was time that we went our separate ways and just thanked her for all the moments that we'd shared together. And it was a very sad time, Lisa. But ultimately it was extremely freeing for me. Mm. So yes, how did you deal like with it then? Sorry, with, go ahead. Sorry, how no, did I ahead. deal with... Um, no, no, go ahead. It's like um, your... Finish your thought first, love. Because it'll be a good I one, haven't. I know. <laughs> sorry, I can't remember. <laughs> so how did you deal with when, you know, you have to have that talk and people are saying to you... Um, and I've even had people say to me, are you quite right in the head? As, you know, questioning well, that maybe I'm yes. having a bit of a breakdown. Well, I won't mention this particular family member by name or even their relationship to me, but they're a very close family member. And every time I speak to this particular person about, oh, you know, I, I, I don't obviously ever discuss the details of a reading. That is totally confidential, but I will mention I've given a reading. I say, oh, I gave a reading today. And this person in particular will go, oh, they must be mad you know, to believe in yeah. that poppycock, you know, and it's just like, and I'll just state my case now, whereas before I would have felt stupid and small and wouldn't even probably mention it unless it came up accidentally. Now it's just like, I'll say it, and then I'll say, well, you're entitled to your beliefs and I'm entitled to mine, and they're not mad, and I did a, you know, I did a really great reading for that person. Mm. It really helped them, and that's why I do it. Mm. I don't do it to get liked or receive the approval of my family and friends around me, I, I do this work because it's what I'm here to do. Like all of us, we're here to live our spiritual purpose. And the part of that is coming coming into the sunlight, like I said before, into the sunlight, out of the shadows, and just stating it loud and proud. This is who I am. I am, I am completely authentic and I'm living my purpose. Yeah. Now, we've got Faith Rivera on our, in our studio, uh, her music, I should say, not Faith herself. Um, Faith Rivera. Uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, it'd be nice to have Faith. We might do that, actually. That'd be really great because Faith writes oh, songs. Cool. Yeah, wouldn't it be great? I'm going to do that. I'll write to her. Now, Faith has these amazing songs that are designed to support us spiritually and nurture us and help us and guide us and give us a beautiful experience of what it's like to feel really just great and one of them is called called to be i'm going to play that right now because i think it's a perfect time for what we're talking about have a listen to this guys and then we will be back with um some really just on point what to do's for you
to be faith. We're called to be peace. We are called to be healers. We are called to be love. We are called to be a great friend. We are called to do our work here on planet Earth. This is what it's all about. When you are feeling that call, that call in your heart, in your gut, in your mind, in your body, in your bones, it's there because it's a powerful, special, sacred contract that your soul has written before you inhabited your physical body. That's why it's so powerful. That's why you have that urge. That's why you might be trying to drink it away, um, sleep it away, eat it away. There's lots of different ways that we try and avoid what it is we're called to be before we before we get that confidence and sometimes it's not even the confidence sometimes it's just that I just can't do this anymore I can't live my I can't I can't deny my truth anymore so that was Faith Rivera with called to be and I invite you to check her out you can find her at Faith Rivera that's R-I-V-E-R-A dot com. She's on Reverb Nation as well. You'll be able to find all her lyrics, all her songs. You can buy them, listen to them. She's a powerhouse. And she's absolutely helping me in so many ways. Because when we listen to music that inspires us and, and brings us this incredible feeling of soaring through the clouds, our spirit, our vibration is raised to such an incredible level that we are manifesting what we want, aren't we, Lisa? Yes, absolutely. It's all about, and I think this was discussed as the topic of another show, is like um, what happens when your vibration is raised so high that you just subconsciously start attracting all the stuff that you want for yourself into yourself. And it's you're not going to reach that level of vibration unless you're honest about who you are and you're walking your talk. So, so true. This is a journey that, that you can take. If you're on this journey right now, if you're trying to figure out how you can live out loud spiritually, if you are doing it already and you're still not comfortable with it, that's okay. Cut yourself some slack. You're supposed to be doing what you're doing right now because coming out of that closet is part of the journey, isn't it, Lisa? Oh, yes. I learned a lot along the way. It's like... um. Um, the process of being honest and stepping up to the plate and saying, this is me, this is who I am, and this is what I do, um, it, it grew me as a person, as, you know, in my, as in my personality as well as in, in my soul and living my soul purpose. It's, I grew a lot from the journey. Mm. Recently I met up with someone who I haven't seen for, gosh, 20 years maybe, a long time anyway. And this is a person I didn't particularly like 
to be perfectly frank, I, I've never liked this person. And when I when they walked into the gathering where I was at, and I thought, oh no, <laughs> oh no, completely in my judgment. <laughs> oh no, can't believe they're here. Yeah. And so you know, he sort of said, and what are you doing these days? Well, that's the big question, isn't it? That's the sixty-four thousand dollar question. How do you tell someone who is all about pulling their pants down in front of you to show you the bruise on their butt and slugging back beers while they're doing it? And you know, oh well, so it's okay. Well, that's what I'm doing. I'm working with the angels these days, and I've got Angel Hunt Radio and blah 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 blah. And he looked at me, and he screwed up his face, and he said, "You've got to be kidding me, right?" And I said, well, you would think so, wouldn't you? But no, I'm not. And so he set about for the next hour trying to bait me into having a heated discussion. And so I'm silently calling on the angels because I'm very fiery. I've got a lot of planets in my – I've got a lot of fire planets. And I just I, – I like to engage. And it doesn't get me anywhere. And it's very draining and depleting and very negative. So I'm choosing not to do that more and more. And so I'm calling on the angels the whole time, you know, please guide my words, please guide me in love. I choose to stand in love. I choose to elevate my perception of this person and this situation. Wow. I just can't tell you how things began to turn around. It turns out that what I'd seen, the behavior of this person as the person, of course, isn't the person at all. This person was carrying a lot of pain, a lot of grief, and he opened up and shared things with me about his life. And I looked at him in a whole new way. And we had this amazing discussion about two hours in. And when he was leaving, I went up and gave him an absolutely heartfelt hug. And I looked at him and I said, isn't it amazing? All these years down the track, all these miscommunications that we've had, we've finally come together as two souls connecting for the first time. And it was the most beautiful thing, Lisa. My judgment of this person was like a red flag that I couldn't see beyond. And it wasn't the person at all. It was all about me and my judgment of him. It was amazing. Mm. Yes. It's easy. It's very easy when people try to bait us, try to, because they're often hiding behind something that they're comfortable with as well. They've got stuff in their life. They've got things that have happened in their lives that have been very painful and they don't know how to be comfortable um, in, in, you know, intimate conversations with people. Yes. Yep, so it's, it's good um, idea. Yep, good idea. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So, all right. So if you're in that situation yourself, call on the angels to help you with your words, your thoughts, your feelings, your judgments. And it's a silent conversation that you can be having all the time. You've got at least two guardian angels with you at all times. You've got all the angelic beings around you at all times. They don't have any, they don't have bodies. I have ego, so they're not constricted as to where they can be and what they can be doing and how many people they can be helping. So you just call on the angels to help you, and it's a continuous feed for me. Um, angels, I need more help. <laughs> Go on, step in. How do you do that, Lisa? How do you engage with the angels and your guides when you're in a situation where you're feeling quite um, challenged? Um, I'll just make a silent prayer um, with sort of like using power of intention and a silent prayer to the angels. I'll ask for what I want or need or I'll, uh, or I'll whisper it quietly under my breath or sometimes um, there is a particular situation in my life where I live on a major highway. Um, I live on the edge of town. Um, so I'm still in the town, but it's a very, very busy road. It's the major highway of New Zealand. And it's very dangerous crossing that road. The traffic goes fast. It's coming out of town and into the um, high speed part. And so to get across the road to get to the dairy, or the, also known as a convenience store, I say a prayer to the angels. And I just, I just say it. And it's just I want their help, so I'm asking for it. People walk past, and some of them give me funny looks when they hear me saying, angels, 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 please help me cr open up a gap so I may cross this road safely and quickly. Thank you. 
And then I'll say, thank you, thank you, thank you, when they always come through for me, of course, and I get through to the other side safely, and I'll thank them. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I get odd looks, and it just I, I'm just at the point now where it just doesn't even register. It's just like, okay, you know, that's where you're at, that, that's the way you feel about it, but... You know, the angels help me because I asked. I'll just um I'll just say it. I'll just say it. Mm. But if it's if it's a situation which is a, perhaps a little tense and it's and you might feel it's it's not the right thing to do to say it out loud, I will say it silently and that's very effective too. Yeah. Because communication isn't restricted to anything. It's an open Imagine you've walked into a room and there's the most amazing buffet. There's food, there's drink, there's um, gems, there's gold, there's pots of rainbows, there are beautiful energies of, of heart energy that you can dip into and take as much as you want. That's what working with the angels is for me. Everything I need Every single thing I need is always provided for me. It doesn't always come in the way I want or recognize at first. And I can be quite stubborn about it, Lisa. Oh, no, I want it to be green. I want it to be this size and I want it to be this shape. While meanwhile, exactly what I really, truly need is available to me right then. So it's and letting it's go of preconceived ideas. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, and it's just like letting go of that preconceived idea and the angels will bring you something even better. Yes, absolutely. So we've got Erin on the switchboard. She's listening. Erin, thanks for calling in. I had a great conversation with Erin while um, in the first part of Fate's song, Off Air. And Erin was saying that we are the only show outside the USA that she listens to. Woo! Thank you, Erin. And how much <laughs> she appreciates <laughs> how much she appreciates what we do and she said she wants us to know that we really do make a difference in her life and the topics, the guests, the things that we bring forward are so helpful to her. So thank you Erin, that's just brilliant. While I've not listened to Erin's program, she's got a show on Blog Talk Radio as well. I've got your number. You might want to go and have a listen to that. I certainly will be. Okay, so let's just say now that um, right, you're getting some information, you're getting some guidance, you're getting some help from the things that Lisa and I are saying and it feels really good to you in this moment and you're feeling a bit stronger and you go out into the world today and you find that it's very difficult, that it's much more difficult <laughs> in real life to begin to live out loud spiritually. What do you do? Lisa, what would you recommend to someone as one of the ways that they can assist themselves to... Um, embrace this journey, this way of being in a, a simple way, uh, maybe a baby step way? Well, a baby step way is to simply, just by the decision of, of making this decision, by doing it, if you can take a step back from the need to be liked, and if you, like me, it got, it took, when I reached the point where people say, oh, what do you do? I'd say, oh, I'm an angel teacher. I teach people about angels. And it's just like letting go of the need to be liked and just seeing the response. And like you said, Anaya, it's surprising how many people go, oh, really? Really? That's a really interesting subject. You know, I didn't, I've never met an angel teacher before. Well, you know, what exactly do you do? And a whole conversation will start. Um if you can take a step back from the need to be like and say it, and if someone doesn't like it, well, how do you feel about yourself? It's not how they feel about you that matters. How do you feel about yourself for being honest about who you are, for loving the angels, for loving spirit and creator, and saying it, this is what I do. I'm living my purpose. Mm. I think that's an absolutely brilliant point and it's one of the things that really resonated with me with what you said, Lisa, is just take that step and just say something simple, I'm an angel teacher or I read, you know, the oracle or whatever it may be and stop. Stop right there. Give the other person a chance to respond. You might feel like you need to rush in and fill it up with words. Oh, look at that. Oh, there's a bus over there. Oh, wow, it's in the big red bus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to deflect <laughs> oh my god that's uh. the biggest red box I've ever seen just stop this is hard but it's it's really valuable just stop and let the other person respond 
if they respond in the positive, as, as Lisa said, happens more often than you might believe, then you've got a whole conversation that can open up. If they respond in the negative, oh, you don't do that, do you? Or, you know, oh, I don't believe in that. I don't believe in that. That's all rubbish. Then that's a different situation altogether. In that situation, what I'd recommend is make sure that you're always surrounding yourself with white light. Very important. You need to clear and you need to cleanse. They're both important. You can't have one without the other. So if you're trying to shield your energy that's already full of um, a heavier vibration, also known as a negative energy, then you need to clear that. On my website, angellight com, you will find under the more tab, my gifts to you. And one of those gifts is the white, pink and purple clearing um, guided process. It's only three or four minutes long, it's, it's, but it's really effective. Um, my website is very, very slow. I'm building a new one. Just stick with me, guys. It's actually faster. Funny about that, Lisa. It's loading up so much faster at the moment. But oh, go and grab that right. and you can download that and keep it. And you can give it to your friends as well. Um, so you can get that happening for yourself and you can use it all the time. So, okay. Make sure you've got yourself shielded and someone says, oh, what a load of rubbish that is. Um, you've got two options. You can either try and talk the person into either believing you or defend what you're doing or you can understand that they are not interested and as Lisa said, it is not a reflection on you. So you can either just say something along the lines of, oh, well, we might have to disagree. We might, let's just agree to disagree and move on. And if they don't want to, then you move on. Go somewhere else. Go talk to somebody else. Leave the room. Leave the environment. You don't have to be there. Um, if you choose to stay and you choose to engage, then you will find that your energy is going to become heavier and heavier as well. You can't... Remember that I was saying, Lisa, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make a drink? Mm. Yeah. Mm. Sometimes we just it's have just to like, leave. Yep. Yep. And it's just like not getting tempted into the need to try and convince them, exactly like you said. If you buy into that and it becomes like, oh, but, 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 and um, explaining and defending, exactly like you say, it's just going to drag your energy down and it's it's almost certainly not going to change their mind. Um, and why do you want to anyway? It's um, you're living your purpose and they've got, and they've got, the beliefs that they have at this point and so it's a matter of mutual respect if you can have respect for them then fingers crossed and and with the help of the angels they will respect your right to your beliefs mm. but if they don't it's okay to leave and yep. it's not about yep. well, I'm going I, then it's about well yep. um, yeah, just remove yourself from the situation and this becomes easier and easier to do you'll find your own way of doing it but it's important see we have a responsibility Energetically, we have a responsibility to ourselves. We have a responsibility for our own energetic fields. And trying to talk someone else into seeing our point of view, trust me, I've spent many years trying to do this. It does not work. It drags you down. And it's very heavy. It's a very negative way to try and do it. And if you do do it, don't give yourself a hard time. Just give yourself permission to do it differently next time. Just move on. Allow yourself to move on. It's all okay. And the other thing I would recommend is when you look at this person, instead of seeing yourself as right and them as wrong or yourself as enlightened and them as a Philistine or whatever it might be, just see them as a holy child of God, of creator, of the universe, of the great one love. They're living their own life for their own purpose. And for all you know, they've been put in your path for this exact reason, this purpose, to give you the opportunity to make different choices and walk away. You know, it's a good idea to remember that when people, oh, here we go, the puppy, and see, look, the puppies are barking. <laughs> that's a sign, that's yeah. a sign from nature to really listen. So when this happens remember sometimes remember that um, saying what's that saying Lisa um, about entertaining strangers you may be entertaining angels 
Yes, when you entertain a stranger, you may be entertaining an angel. So when you're entertaining someone, i.e. having a conversation with them who's very challenging to you, that may be that they've been put there exactly for that purpose, to help you move beyond it. So give them a silent word of thanks. It's not easy to do, but it's a good thing to do, and it'll help you. And it actually spreads more light on the planet, doesn't it, Lisa? Yes, very much. Mm. Okay, so let's talk about religion now. Um, I recently had a a message via my website from someone saying that um, anyone who makes money by saying that they work with God or they work with the angels is actually a charlatan, that they should only look at the Bible, that, you know, that that person, i.e. me, is absolutely wrong. Um, And I thought, okay, what am I going to do about this? So I left it for a day or two and I really thought about, because I was triggered, I'm honest here, I was triggered by it. So I thought, I'm not going to reply right now. So I got clear with myself and I wrote back and I said to her, while I respect your right to your own point of view, I do ask that no disharmonious messages come through, come to me through my website. And I left it and she didn't reply. And so now I have decided that that's enough. And... Um, My policy now is if someone is abusive, and to me that is abusive, I automatically now, um, while I did choose to reply to this person, Lisa, because I could feel underneath that there was a a really lovely feeling underneath those harsh words, and I wanted to give her, I wanted to pay a little bit of respect to her. I have mm. since marked it as spam, so I won't receive any more from her. But we can, it's okay to get clear and not allow that. And we don't have to, and I don't, I don't get very many anymore. But if I do, um, sometimes I get them on my YouTube channel. There's a, a, a oh, this, is, this is YouTube I've got up. Um, Angels exist and you can ask for proof on my channel, which is youtube.com forward slash Anaya777. And it's got like, I looked at it the other day and it's had like almost 120,000 views and there have mm. been a handful of people writing in saying, you know, you're, you know, you're full of BS basically. That's not bad, a handful over 120,000 views and lots and lots and lots of positive comments. Yeah. But yeah. I don't allow them. I do not allow them anymore. The answer is No. If you want to behave that way, that's your entitlement, but you don't get to do it in my energy field. And it's good to get clear, isn't it? Yes, very good. Very, very good to set those boundaries. Mm. And we have the right to. You all have the right to set the Mm. boundaries to say no. I know a lady... Does it make you a good person? Personally. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I was just going to share something that's relevant... I know a lady personally who says she does the work she does and she's um, she's very open spiritually about her role as a light worker and she says she just never encounters anyone who who gets in her face about what she does because she set the intention as, okay, they're out there, I know there are people who don't agree with me but I don't want to encounter them. She set that spiritual boundary and they just don't present to her. Mm. which I thought was very interesting. It's just like saying no on an energetic level as well as a physical one. That's exactly right. And it's an important thing to do um, because I feel that when we are taking personal responsibility for our energy field and our our vibration, as you know, Mind Your Own Vibration is a group you belong to, um, with with Anne Alexon, when we are minding our own vibration, it really does then set up an energetic field around us. So, okay, what happens is we all talk about manifestation. Well, when it's not necessarily about attracting something to us, we are then just in the same vibrational field as what it is we're putting out there. 
because it's an automatic like attraction. It. It's a, yeah. yeah, it is yeah. a magnetic attraction. We don't have to sit there and say, I'm now going to vibrate more wealth to me, for example, or more harmony. When we are vibrating harmony ourselves and we make that clear intention, like I, Archangel Michael is my gatekeeper. Everyone that comes to me comes through Archangel Michael. Everything that comes to me comes through Archangel Michael. And that's not to say, like this lady turned up, but she turned up with a gift in her hands. She turned up so that I could pay respect to her, but say no at the same time. So have a think about getting Archangel Michael to be your gatekeeper and all you have to do is ask. That's all you have to do. So working with the angels, Lisa, there are so many opportunities and avenues to have really clear communications with them, but they'll work with us in our physical life in a very tangible way, won't they? Oh, in a very practical, hands-on, very real way. It's like making a difference to you, not only spiritually and in the grander sense of your life purpose, but just getting through the day on a daily life basis. Um, they'll help you in any way they can and all you really have to do is ask that's exactly right and it's the asking that's important we, it's easy to forget um, and we might think oh I want this to happen that's not asking asking is saying uh, for an example dear angels my requirement is peace, harmony I require respectful people in my life and it also means in return that I am a respectful person to other people. So ask for what you want. It's very important. And listen to the guidance because when the guidance comes, Doreen Virtue talks about a day um, where she really started working with Archangel Michael and she was getting ready to go out and she kept getting a message from Michael saying this was not a good idea for her and she decided to do it anyway. He said, put the top up. She had a convertible, put the top up on your car and she didn't pay any attention and she pulled up into a car park and I can't remember if it was two or three men um, set upon her when she pulled up and it could have been a very dangerous thing. This is what Archangel Michael was talking to her about even though he didn't show her specifics. But fortunately, she called out for Michael again and help came her way and she was fine. Lisa, when we get these feelings, these nudges, this guidance, it's important to pay attention to our bodies, I find. Because my guidance mm. often comes through my body. Do you know what I mean? Yes, I do. That I, I, I call it sort of like, um, I used to have a technique that I sort of, self-named my inner pendulum and if you think of a swing of a pendulum saying yes or no I would go by the feelings of my body as to whether the answer to a question was a yes or a no so you very much do feel um, guidance from the angels in your body I'd get if I got a yes answer I'd feel this really expansive feeling in my chest and if I got a no answer it would be like a, my heart was a ball of paper being crumpled and it's just like it was a physical feeling in my body and that's how the guidance came to me. That's really, I really like that. That's a great way of explaining it. So, and I love this idea about your body you know, having that, that pendulum because our bodies are essentially one dynamic <laughs> energy scanner. We're always scanning yeah. energies, aren't we? <laughs> yes, we are. So what always. is your energy telling you? Yeah, how do you feel? Mm -hmm. um, when, some, when someone walks into a room, notice your energy. Does it drop or does it rise? If it drops, there's absolutely no point in trying to engage in a spiritual discussion with that person. Sometimes we feel like we've got to prove that we're spiritual people and so we try and talk other people into accepting that about ourselves, Lisa, which is quite fruitless. But it is an exercise that does show us, if, if you're doing that yourself at the moment, guys, you know, cut yourself some slack. I think most of us have done that. But what it will show you is your energy field drops and when your energy field drops, if you stay in that, then you really are open to a lot of uh, disharmonious energies 
coming to you. So it's about how do I then bring my energy back up? And normally for me, it means that I remove myself from that situation. Lisa, what do you what do you do? Um, I just um, I just sort of like sit with my own energy. You could say I'll just um, okay, maybe that person will approach me, maybe they won't, but I'm not going to approach them because I'm not getting a good feeling about the interaction we would have. Or if it's if I'm just feeling really strongly that this is not a good place to be. The energy is dense. It's 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 not nice. I'm I'm not feeling good. I I think the best thing you can do is remove yourself. Just get out of that situation. Yeah, and that's a powerful choice to make. That is it's a very a powerful. Yeah. Yeah. And the other thing I think we have to remember is the more that we make these powerful choices, the more we're fine-tuning our um, our energy fields ourselves, the more we're fine-tuning um, our boundaries, the more we're fine-tuning what it is we really want to experience. We're going to go to a station yeah. break and we'll be back in just a few seconds. You're listening to another fabulous program on Angel Heart Radio, sponsored by angellight777.com. There is so much more to this magnificent world than meets the eye. You are already connected to your angels. There are messages waiting for you. You are loved. Visit angellight777.com, follow your intuition, and choose one of the three methods to receive the angels' guidance for you. Angellight777.com The angels have a lot to say to you there. And of course, Lisa's website is feathersofanangel.com Okay, so we are continually being called, um, not from an outside force that says, I want you to do this. We are continually being called by our own soul by our own um, higher, our higher aspects, if you will, to bring the messages of peace and love. In many ways, it may be that you are a doctor and your practice revolves around um, the normal channels that you expect when you go to a doctor. And yet, you have a way of making your... I've actually been to a doctor like this. She's absolutely beautiful. And you have a way of helping your patients feel at peace and calm. You might not practice any spiritual practices other than seeing your patient as someone valuable that you want to know is cared about and heard. You listen to what they have to tell you. They're not just a patient to you or a number. That is a spiritual practice. That is a spiritual principle of extending that wonderful energy of care and compassion. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to read the oracle, does it, Lisa? No. No, it's just... Um, yes, just... Um, I'm sorry, I'm just feeling a bit overwhelmed. That was lovely. <laughs> it's just Aww. that I've got a doctor who's who's very, um, she's very thorough. She's probably the best um, general practitioner or I think in America you would say primary health care provider I've ever had. She's very thorough. She makes me feel listened to and cared for and she'll chase me up when I'm a bit slow about making an appointment to come and see her. She cares so much she'll get her staff to ring and say, hey, you're due for an appointment, you know, would you like to book now? And it's just like the sense of care and and love I get from that doctor is I mean like I don't know if she's spiritual we've never discussed it but it's a very spiritual thing to do mm, it is and um, you know th this may be that you are a parent and your soul is um, asking you to listen to your children to teach them um, qualities of care and compassion that you wish to and hey let's face it when we're parents we're not perfect 
but you know in the workforce it doesn't necessarily mean that you were living in inverted commas a spiritual life in terms of being a spiritual teacher you know teaching about angels or energy fields or that's that's just one aspect of it it's about living in a way that you feel really comfortable with it's about living in a way that when you go to bed at night, you feel like you've made a difference somewhere along the line today, whether it's to yourself or somebody else is irrelevant. Because when we take care of ourselves, when we nurture ourselves and give ourselves the love, care and compassion we so deserve and desire, that then becomes a way of being that we then give to other people. So your spiritual life may be that you are a, uh, an elder in a church or you may be um you may go to a, a church or a synagogue or any place of worship and you care about your fellow human beings that you are involved with delivering I had a friend who was a, a, a Christian lady and we were friends for a lot of years and still are actually a lovely lady and she was one of those people I used to get migraines terribly Lisa and what she would do is um, without any preamble she would just drop off a casserole for the family's dinner mm-hmm. yeah. she would ring me up and yeah. say oh listen um, how about I pick up the girls for you today Oh, Helen, that would be wonderful. Now, her beliefs and my beliefs were very, very different. She's a staunchly Christian lady. But she didn't ever try and make me um, fit her mould and I didn't try and make her fit my mould either. And it was a beautiful experience. And that's what it is to live in the world with your spiritual life, as I feel, is to be who you are graciously, as graciously as you can be in any moment, and we're not gracious all the time, um, And allow other people to do that and find a meeting ground somewhere along the line where you can both be comfortable enough with each other to, you know, be able to have a lovely relationship, whether that relationship lasts for an hour or a lifetime is irrelevant, Lisa. Well, yes, excuse me, it's... um Sorry, I've just lost my train of thought again. I'm sorry, I'm having a day of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness sake. That, okay, angels, angels, just, angels, let's bring back that angels, thought. Angels, angels, okay. angels. This is Lisa's train of thought, please. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I guess my point, Lisa, yeah. is that um, we can support ourselves in many, many ways. And whether or not someone is their spiritual life may be that they are a kind, compassionate, caring person or they may be an energy practitioner or they may be um, a, an author or an angel teacher or they may have a, a spiritual church or it doesn't, that, that part doesn't matter so much, does it? It's about how we live our lives in an authentic right. way that feels comfortable to us. Yes, it's it's about being who you are, and you may or may not be a light worker, but whatever your work or vocation is, um, you're living your purpose. You are spiritual. You you are spirit in a body, um, and it's about living that in its fullest expression in every every thought, word, and deed. It's not about oh, um, I'm a great spiritual healer. Uh, if that's your path, that's wonderful. But if it's not, you're just as valid and important as anyone who is. Um, you, we're all mm. got our work to do, and it's all equally important. That's very well said. Uh, so I guess in wrapping up the show, <clears throat> I'd like to really encourage everyone listening to notice other people around you and give them support in just quiet ways. And when someone you know or maybe on Facebook starts to make those first tentative moves to um, expressing who they feel they really are, just offer quiet, you know, support. Um, if we look around, I sometimes know on the, on the whatever that... I think it's called a news feed, comes up and I'll see someone making, and I can see it's just a quiet little foray 
into starting to to talk about what is really important to them. I just go on and make a tiny comment or put a little heart up or, or whatever it is and I know that I'm just supporting that person very quietly in a way that will work for them because if you're just starting to say who you are in the real world, um, you, it needs to be quiet for some people. Some people like me, I'm a bit more out there um, but I wasn't always spiritually but I am now and I'm really because I'm really comfortable now. So just supporting people's comfort levels, I think, is a, a valuable thing to do. Doesn't have to be the way you think it needs to be. I guess is is that overall mm-hmm. is the message I'm trying to get through to that, to by saying it's that it's just a matter of perhaps of just honouring and respecting where they are and and just. You know, not going out of your way to make it difficult for people, perhaps. Like you say, just um, letting them have their comfort zone. Hmm. Yeah. It's it's a really great thing because at the end of the day, what we're doing is is we're just being a support to people. And when we are a support to people, we then put out a very lovely energy, and it is a it is a spiritually based. Um, vibration, everything's a vibration, we know that. There's nothing that isn't a vibration. But we're giving people the option and the opportunity to to come... Oh, hang on a second, I've got something playing in the background here. Uh, we're giving people that opportunity to really... Sorry, I had something playing in my ear that popped up on my screen and I couldn't figure it. I just can't get rid of it. There you go. And even though you guys probably couldn't hear it, I um, my train of thought was was a bit um, skew if you know we've we've all got a lot of freedom to make choices internal choices we might not feel like we've got that freedom externally by sharing what we really do believe at any given moment but that will come the more you practice it the more you give yourself permission to just be who you are it will begin to unfold I that's what I how I found it for me Lisa yes and me exactly the same way Baby steps, baby steps all the way. Give yourself the opportunity to go slowly. You don't have to jump out of a plane with a sign that says, hey, I'm a light worker. <laughs> if you want to, you can. <laughs> if you, if, you, know, if you, you need to go a bit more quietly, that's okay too. Yeah. Okay, so we've got Archangel Metatron coming up on the Archangel series. I know we haven't had an Archangel series for a little while, everyone. Um, There's been lots of reasons for this. Uh, But we have Archangel Metatron coming up in the next week or so. Now, look out for us on angelheartradio.com, which will take you to our blog talk radio station and our Facebook page for the announcement of when that show is going to be. It's going to be a great show and um, looking forward to it, Lisa. Very much. I'm looking forward to it very much too. Mm. So if you are loving the Archangels, Metatron is absolutely brilliant for anybody, particularly anyone who has an affiliation with children. Not just children, but if you are wanting to really work with children, understand children, assist children, especially children who are labelled, then Archangel Metatron is a brilliant show for you to catch and we'll have a lot of information for you uh, on that program. So thank you, Lisa. Another lovely time with thank you today. You. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everyone, you take good care of you. And remember, you matter in the world. You make a difference and take good care of you because you, how can I say it? You bring more to the planet than you can possibly imagine or understand in this moment. Your vibration on this planet is a powerhouse of energy and you get to choose what to do with it. Okay, Lisa, looking forward to the next time. We will talk again soon. Thank you. Talk soon, everyone. Have a great day. You've been listening to another fabulous program on Angel Heart Radio. Our goal is to remind you of how much you matter in the world and to let you know that we appreciate who you are in the world. 
You can check out who's on, when we're on and who our guests are at angelheartradio.com. Everything is there. It's all just one click away. Angel Heart Radio programs are powerful tools to help you in your life and your life experience. They are not intended, nor should they, be used to replace your medical or legal advice. The views expressed by hosts, co-hosts, callers, guests and associates should not be construed as advice from Angel Heart Radio.